Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org, Consequence, and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here, checking out the series. Of course, you know what to do. If you uh, if you like what you see, what you hear, hit that subscribe button. I put out three new interviews every single week, so it's a great way to keep up with all of your favorite artists. And I'm so excited to be talking with him today. Speaking of favorite artists, Lee Lochnane of Chicago is here. We've got uh, a Christmas hits collection. Hello. Hello, Kyle. Thanks for having me on the show. It's great to see you. And uh, and and you're always able to be, I mean, this is the band that's been around for well over 50 years now and always touring. Uh, I know you're right, doing the band the, uh... that won't go away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was always the rock and roll bands with horns, but maybe you've got a new tag at this point. <laughs> <laughs> This morning, it's uh, that's the new one for me. <laughs> that's the new one, man. It is a pleasure to see you on here. And again, um, uh, what we're mostly talking about today, as I mentioned, uh, greatest Christmas hits you've compiled. What is it? The three Christmas albums? Is that what it is? This is a compilation of three Christmas albums in a bundle that's out on CD, uh, Chicago Complete Christmas, and then out of that, uh, Warner Rhino chose, I think, the best songs that did well for them and put them on the greatest Chicago Christmas hits. And uh, I think the title is something like that, right? Yeah, Chicago's right. Chicago's greatest Christmas hits. And and, uh, and that's what it is. I think it uh, opens up with Let It Snow, which I think was their biggest seller. So, uh, and uh, luckily I was able to sing on that one. I had no idea that I was gonna do it when I brought the arrangement and I had, I had uh, intended for someone else to sing the lead because i am the trumpet player but uh so not only did i play trumpet on that song i sang it and you know i i told them to give me a shot uh see what i sound like on a couple lines and <clears throat> bring in the hook and get me out of there if it's not working and it worked out pretty good and you're you are our introduction to the holidays this year so that's... All right, Merry Christmas! <laughs> it's a lot. It feels like it's a little bit of weight on on your shoulders. You got to hold the whole holidays up with that one. Oh no, 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 no! It's going to be fun for everybody. It's light and airy. <laughs> so, so the label is the one that got to choose these. It's always kind of interesting when I talk to artists who put out any kind of hits collection because sometimes right. you pass it off. It's a label or the manager, or whatever. Sometimes the artist is, you know, and it, like it opens up the debate. I mean. Do you find for yourself personally? I mean, you're like, oh, I would have put this one on and maybe not that one. Does it come well, around to that? You know, I mean, we're on the road, so we're quite busy with what we're doing out here. And Peter Chivarelli, our manager, is usually, he's very hands-on and very meticulous as to what he would like as well. So I'm sure he had his ideas in there with one Rhino as they were picking the songs. Yeah. He had, he's all, always has our best interest at heart. Yeah. Well, it helps that, you know, you're kind of going, oh, these are the biggest ones. These are the biggest songs. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And we wouldn't know. Yeah, they right. would. They're right. the ones that are looking at the numbers, not us. <laughs> it is a great collection, and it's fun to see this. But it's also interesting to see, like, you know, so the first Christmas album, I think, came out around, uh, it might be the 25th anniversary. At least it's around there. It was but, 98, I think. Yeah. So, and now with three Christmas albums, I mean, obviously, you know, for all the rest of the year, you have all these years, these decades of hits, but you've right. sort of found this lane. I mean, Chicago has this holiday lane. Like, why do you think cool. it's become such an important, I don't know, touchstone for, you know, part of the later career of the band? Well, you know, there comes a time for everyone to to uh, take a look back. And we, we are so busy still to this day, working all the time that it's difficult to sit down and take a look back at what your career has been doing. And, and you know, funnily enough, when we, funnily a word, is that? Sure, word? it is now. Something like, yeah, right. It is for you, Lee. <laughs> look it up. Uh, anyway, when we uh, got to the 25th year and decided on doing a Christmas album, it was probably in June that we started doing it. You know, it was April, May or June that we started recording the album. So it was the middle of summer. And uh, Roy Bitten, who, who was the producer of the album, the first day we came in to the studio, he had it festooned with lights and, and all kinds of uh, uh, 
decor Christmas decorations. I think he might have even had a tree in the control room. And it was like he wanted us to feel like it was Christmas. And it did. It was really cool. Yeah. And that success, did it surprise you that uh, the Christmas albums have kind of taken off in the way they have? Because because there are lots of Christmas albums, but people well, chose this one. And we, tr we uh, looked at it as though we were going to make uh, original arrangements of Christmas songs, the tried and true Christmas hits, but make them, uh, we ended up calling it Chicagoized Christmas songs. And uh, we did arrangements. And a few years back, we had done a, uh, a big band album. And we approached those songs pretty much the same way we did with the Christmas albums as original arrangements of tried and true hits. Mm -hmm. So uh, these songs, I, I know that many of them, when they start out uh, playing the intro, you don't know it's a Christmas song until it hits the first verse. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I heard that, that people were playing these records all year long because they weren't your typical Christmas songs and they were listenable no matter what type of, no matter what time of year it was. Yeah. And that's a hard trick to pull off. And, uh, you know, maybe not for you guys, you might have made it sound easy at least. Well, we enjoyed doing the arrangements. I can tell you that much for sure. Yeah. There was, um, it, while it's not on the greatest hits, there was uh, uh, one of the originals on that first record was uh, Child's Prayer, which you co-wrote. Correct. With Where did that song come from? Uh, John Darrell presented that song to me, and then I added my little uh, piece of the action, and we did a demo, played it for the band, and uh, everybody got excited, and we, we did it for the album. Yeah. And uh, it was a lot of fun because the... I think the most fun that the band had during that that recording was the day that we brought our kids in to sing Child's Prayer. And I think Jimmy had a song called One Little Candle. And uh, the, our kids came in and sang both of those songs on the same day. So instead of bringing our instruments in, we brought cameras. And <laughs> we were running around taking pictures all day. That's nice. It was great. Yeah. Is there... Like to write a Christmas song, you you know you've got the assignment, you know, or a holiday song, or anything like that. You, you know, you any holiday is what I mean. You've got the assignment anyway. Is it different than writing a non-holiday tune? I mean, or, or is it just kind of the same with, you know, the words you know you're going to put in? I think it was actually more fun because there there is less uh, competition, mm -hmm. maybe, uh, and you know that you're going to have a, a song on the album. All you got to just put the arrangement together, and it was fun writing the arrangements and changing changing it up rhythmically and maybe making a couple of different uh, changes on quarterly. Uh, and, uh, you know, you keep the melody the same, make sure the song is recognizable as the song, but uh, maybe not necessarily right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Sort of trick them into it. This is not really a Christmas song. <laughs> Here it is! Here yeah. it is. <laughs> I, I've said this before, but I think if if I were if I were an artist who are in the really in the game, that uh, that would be my goal. Like you know, to to pull off what Mariah has pulled off, what's wow yeah. McCartney had even pulled. I mean, of course, you know he's got the Beatles and all that, but but he yeah. could have that. What he could just have wonderful Christmas time, and you'd be set for life, right? Like that's you know, that's, the, that's the, I feel like that would be the dream. Like get that you know, song. People have those those songs that have set them up for life, and I'm I'm not one of those. You know, I'm a you know, I got I'm like a two hit wonder. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> it's afforded me a very good life, and I I love what we're doing. You know, I I can think of a lot worse things to be doing with my life right about now. Yeah, but what great <laughs> hits they are, by the way. It it's, is uh... fun. It is fun playing them every night, and people don't tire of them. Yeah. which is gratifying for us i'll tell you yeah well i know uh, speaking of playing them you know for people um uh with the next tour on the way next year but uh but also looking a little bit back like this year you guys started some of the tour by releasing a cover of magical mystery tour speaking of the that's Beatles. right that's right <laughs> right and i was able to go on the, the Beatles station and present it with uh um uh is it Frick, I, I, I'm David Frick, David Frick, yeah, and um, I, I'm blanking on the names now. There's three guys that have the uh, breakfast for, with the Beatles in the morning, mm -hmm. and uh, but it was a lot of fun talking to those guys because I listened to the Beatles station all the time, and and uh, Tom Franzioni, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a lot of fun talking with them. And I think I actually, uh, they, they were had designed the show as a surprise and they were going to present the fact that we were going pre- to have the Chicago version of Magical Mystery Tour on the show. <laughs> as we were talking, just sort of, you know, off the cuff, I brought it up. And uh, <laughs> I think they had the surprise all all uh, worked up and I sort of blew their surprise. And uh, I'm still not sure if they're upset with me or not. <laughs> if I'll get back on the show or not. <laughs> I, think, I think they'll be fine. I think they'll be fine. But I that's, so. what, what I hadn't realized when I heard this, uh, hearing you all talking about it, was that stretched all the way back to the early, early days too. That was a song that you all were covering right from right from the beginning, right? Is yeah. that right? Oh, yeah. When Sergeant Pepper came out, and then uh, I mean, we loved the Beatles from the from the get go. We played a bunch of Beatles songs when we were playing the clubs, and uh, um, uh, Magical Mystery Tour was one of them. And I, I heard um, uh, as a, as we were recording it, I was looking for older versions when we did it in the clubs, and we actually recorded it live in Japan, and uh, it didn't sound quite as good as what it does now. <laughs> Uh, we <laughs> it sounds a little more like uh the actual song than we did way back when but you know we, we enjoyed the beatles so much that we had to, to uh try our best yeah have you have you listened to the new one with now and then oh yeah yeah and that's amazing that technology this ai stuff is really pretty bizarre that I, and and separating the piano mm-hmm. from the vocal was it's beyond magical. I mean, it's like you can't do that. But this computer has decided that it can. That it so, can. Who knew? Yeah. How do you feel about the actual song? That I think that's because at first it was about the AI, and and then you know people kind of got over that once they realized why it was used and how it was used, and then it became about the song. And that's been, I find, one of the most interesting conversations that's happened over the past few weeks. It is very cool. Uh, it's probably not, and I I doubt that they would consider it their best song. But uh, it, it's a song that is very, it's unique in the fact that it's, you know, it has two people on it that aren't with us anymore. So uh, to be able to do that and still pull it off and, and seem like they are all in the studio together, it's magical. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a, I, I've, I've thought of it that long winding road, like it would almost, it's, it's almost like John's version of that in a way. Exactly. Hear, right. you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So, you know, I know that's just a one-off um, to kind of launch the tour. Do you guys think about those? I mean, do you have kind of the backlog or the wish list or the archive? You're like, oh, more of the, more more of that kind of stuff. How, how do you mean to do more songs to present a, a tour? Well, or just the covers, the fun stuff, the kind of off-the-cup one-offs, you know? Uh, I think that was pretty much an anomaly for us because we, we usually come out, we have a rehearsal at the beginning of the year and decide what our show is going to be. And uh, because, you know, night after night, you cannot change up the show anymore, uh, uh, w- you know, within reason, because we have so much more production going on. We have the lights and the sound and the microphones and, you know, moving around on the stage. So you pretty much got to know where you're going, what the map is, and uh, and set it up so that the, that the, uh, the show starts with a bang. Hey, how you doing? We're here. And then it comes down a little bit and it goes through its phases. And by the end of the show, you have everybody up and standing. Uh, at least that's the desire. Because if they're not standing by the end of the show, you are in a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been working out for us. So we're good to go. Yeah. When you think about the show in that way, I mean, obviously you've got the songs that you probably need to play. You've, you've got the hits that people are counting on. Do you think about it in thematic terms as well? I mean, is it a storytelling or is it just moods that you're going for? It's it's more moods, I think, that we're going for. And and it's also, uh, like you said, it's the songs that we we need to play, but it's songs that we still don't get tired of playing because I'm asked that all the time. You get tired of playing these songs. And the answer really is no, because they're still as interesting as they were when we recorded them. And uh, our attempt is to try to make them sound like we're playing them for the first time. That's probably the biggest trick. But uh, we're such perfectionists that we want to get it right every time. And as soon as you hit a clam, you know, oh boy, you know, yeah. I'm not, I'll get that one tomorrow. Okay, folks. 
<laughs> and, and realistically, most people don't hear the mistakes that we hear. Right. And so we just go on, go on and uh, play it the best we can. Now, I, I know, like, especially when you've got a catalog as big as yours, every year is an anniversary for some of the albums. I mean, even looking towards That's next right. year, because because Chicago 7 turns 50, and, right. and what is it, Chicago 17 turns 40. Because that's how math works. Now, just imagine <laughs> when Chicago fifty hits fifty. <laughs> well, there we go. Right, but do, <laughs> but do you <laughs> do you take into account those? Mo do you try to do you try to you know to to recognize those moments if you can? I don't think really. I think the you know like uh, the record company is the one that that really reminds us that this is the fifty year fifty year fiftieth anniversary of any particular song or record, and uh, you know wow. Yeah, and you you know you take yourself back to the day that you recorded it. Uh, you know what you can remember from from playing this the the, the song the first time. Yeah, well, that you know probably should hold true for next year with uh, with the song "Call on Me" because that is the 50th anniversary there. Oh so. my God, I yeah. hadn't even thought of that. Obviously, I mean we're so busy that's that's not the first thing on my mind. I don't want to think. I you know, I feel like we're 20 years old with 50 years experience. No, weird how that works out. Oh yeah, it must. It must. I keep trying to look younger, and somehow that's not working out. <laughs> you haven't aged a day. Yeah, right. right. That's yesterday. It's <laughs> <laughs> you're okay. You're over ninety. <laughs> well, I should point out I, I'm in I'm in Louisville here. I've already seen you guys are going to be back here. Um, mm -hmm. May May of next year, you're going to be back. Yes, and that's it. I mean, like. Is it harder to be off because you've been on the road forever and and it seems like you're on the road forever. Is it like and and of course, you've been doing this for a long time, too. I'm, I'm sure you figured out how to how to be on and be off. But That's right. but what is that trans because you hear artists, especially after those first couple of years of, of heavy tour and they'd be like walking through the grocery is the weirdest thing in the world when I get home. <laughs> like, like, what's well, your routine for the come down? Well, it's always necessary because there's no food in the cupboard <laughs> when you get home. Sure. Because right? you want to get rid of the food before you go so it's not growing something by the time you get back. <laughs> and uh, and many times I have forgotten, and there are things a little uh, gamey when you open up the refrigerator the first time. So you got to start cleaning that out and maybe uh, see if there's something that you can eat before you go to the store. But uh, we get used to both phases of our lives. Uh, by the time the, the tour comes to an end or one leg of the tour, we are ready to go home. And uh, we enjoy the end of the tour and that last show. And hey, uh, you guys have a good time, safe flights. We'll see you next time. And then when you get back home, I remember, I, I know that the first time I wake up, pretty much every time I go home, I have to remember that I am home. Oh my God, this is home. This is not another hotel. You know, so, and then I quickly remember where my bathroom is. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be a good feeling right there. I know that's a good feeling. There is, yes, it's, especially after the bathroom visit. It's <laughs> very good feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I got no transition out of that one. No seg. It's, uh, <laughs> but I, I, I more McDonald all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, as far as the touring next year, too, the other big announcement: Earth, Wind, and Fire joint tour. Yes, that starts in July of next yeah. year. It's going to be amazing. With it, I think that's our fourth uh, touring season with them, and uh, we're doing. I, I think it's around forty-six shows now. So we're gonna we're gonna be all over the United States with Earth, Wind, and Fire. A lot yeah. of fun. They play a set, we play a set, and then we both both bands come on stage together and play a six song encore. Three of their songs and three of ours. Yeah, what a what a perfect combination, really. That's it's a, a lot of fun. I keep thinking we we could do the Super Bowl, Chicago and Earth, Wind, and Fire. That would be a great setup for me. <laughs> Need to How about it, folks? <laughs> You've heard it first. Just manifest that out there that's what we're doing just as they get say. it out there come on <laughs> we're gonna make we'll, it happen we'll all fly in <laughs> i have a good feeling about this uh <laughs> greatest hits greatest christmas hits uh that's this great. is so much fun to listen to and lee it's so much fun to talk to you thank you so much for doing this thank you very much kyle it's been great talking to you and thanks to my guest also thanks to you 
for uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week, new and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.